everybody, I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to God, who has given us another day in which we can consider his holy word and learn of him and walk up in his ways. For those of us who speak English, the word of God is the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And we who love the truth, we don't add to it, we don't take away from it. We read the Word of God and what we do what it says, and then we have a good understanding. So I was contemplating a question this morning, and I thought to speak to you a little bit about it today, my sisters, to comfort your hearts, because we live in a, a wicked world, and we see a lot of wickedness. We also get persecuted by people who are involved in false religion, particularly about our modest apparel, about the fact that we cover our head when we pray or prophesy, that we modestly cover our hair because we recognize our glorious hair was given to us for our husband's pleasure. And we also conduct ourselves with humility and grace and don't act like the world. So I wanted to talk to you about this because the women in the false churches behave otherwise, and they don't like us, and they like to accuse us of being legalistic or or prudes or something like that, holier than thou, self-righteous, you know, under the law, and so forth. So I wanted to address this for you today, my sisters. Let's begin in 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So there are things in the world that are alluring to our flesh, things that seem like they're good to eat or beautiful to look upon, or things that will make us wise. wise pardon me, wise. It will make us wise. But we who serve the Lord Jesus Christ understand that he told us, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if we want to know the truth and not be deceived, we know that when we have a question, we always go to the Word of God. You see, there are two seeds in the world. There's the tree of life, which brings forth the seed that brings forth everlasting life. That seed is the Word of God. As Jesus Christ himself said, I'll put that scripture in the description box below. I'm pretty sure I know the address, but I don't want to make a mistake. So Jesus Christ said, the seed is the word of God. And verily, if we don't understand that, we won't understand any parable. We must understand that the, the way that we are born again is by the word of God, as it is written in God's word. So let's go to First Peter and chapter 1. 1 Peter and chapter 1, starting in verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So there are two seeds. There are two seeds. There is a corruptible seed, and there is an incorruptible seed. Let's go to Genesis. And what I'm about to show you, I find to be very profound and beautiful. And I think that those of you, my sisters, who love the truth will find it to be so also. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden. 
And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So we're talking about the corruptible seed. If you look at a piece of fruit, the characteristic of a piece of fruit, so let's look at an avocado. What's in the middle of that fruit? A seed. And a seed brings forth life after the kind of the fruit. So if you have an avocado seed and you plant it, you will get an avocado tree, which will bring forth more avocados. The tree in the midst of the garden was forbidden to Adam and Eve. And the serpent came along to cast doubt in Eve's heart and mind about the validity of obedience unto God by ca causing her to question whether God had told her everything about this fruit, this tree. Now, one thing we can see about this story is that Eve didn't hear the commandment from God directly. When you read in Genesis 2 about her creation, we see that just before she was created, God told Adam not to eat of that tree. So she had heard it from her husband. Eve is a picture of God's people. So we are betrothed unto Jesus Christ. We are the bride of Christ. If you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and filled with his spirit or waiting for it, you are one of God's people. You are in his family. Glory be to God. You are born again of the incorruptible seed. You are born again of the word of God. You heard the word of God. You understood that you were a hopeless sinner. You obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ by being baptized in his name. And now you're in a blood covenant with him, which is a betrothal. So you are currently betrothed to Jesus Christ. You're his bride. You have not gone to the wedding supper yet. The marriage has not yet be, been consummated. So a wife that is betrothed, but who has not yet entered into the marriage chamber with her husband to become one flesh with him, that she can still be cast forth if she commits fornication. In the spiritual sense, this is when someone mingles the word of God with other things. You know, the serpent speaks with a forked tongue. The serpent says, does the word of God really say that? And in particular, what I'm drawing your attention to right now is the serpent causes doubt about whether or not we should actually obey God. And this manifests in our time in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life unto we who are women in the following ways. Well, you can wear pants because you bought them at the women's department. You know, they've got pink flowers on them. They're not an abomination. Technically, they're made for women. The lust of the flesh. Or, you don't have to cover your head when you pray or prophesy. You see, here it says that your hair is given to you for a covering. So you can disregard everything else that's written about a woman covering her head before that. The serpent speaks with a forked tongue, and he often comes 
to God's people with technicalities or or with distortions, with manipulation. And the manipulation is this, it's flattery. You can have your flesh and your pride and your vanity and the kingdom of God too. And verily I say unto you, this is a lie that will cause you to die the same way that Adam and Eve died. You see, Eve is a picture of the bride of Christ. And when the serpent comes to you and says, well, you don't really have to obey God about that. Like, here's the, here's the, like, the, the theology. Let's go to Greek and Hebrew. Let's go to this other passage that's completely not related to what we're talking about here and misuse it to make excuse for your sin. And of course, the, the commonest of ways this is done is when the serpent takes passages in Romans and Ephesians particularly, letters that are written to Christians to convince people that baptism doesn't save you. But you see, if somebody comes to you and they say, well, baptism doesn't save you, all you have to do is confess the name of the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Well, you see, they're calling Jesus Christ a liar when they say that because Jesus Christ said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Hallelujah. So the way that we, as God's people, don't fall in to the subtle snares of the serpent is to ask our husband when we have a question. So someone comes to you and they say, they say something like, you know, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. See? See where that's written? So you don't have to cover your head. That was for them That back then. That was old. We're free now. We don't have to worry about sin. When somebody comes to us with things like that, what do we say? We say what Eve should have said. We say, well, excuse me just a minute. I have to go ask my Lord. And we get into our private place. We open the word of God with our head covered, of course on our knees we say father what is true what is true and if we do this we will not be confused we will not be misled let's go to matthew chapter 7. i'm going to show you something very beautiful from the word of god jesus says starting in verse 15 beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. What is the fruit that's being spoken of here? Well, one thing we can understand about seeds. Let's talk about an avocado seed. So avocado is a fruit. And in the middle of the fruit, there's a seed. And if you take the seed out of the fruit and plant it in the earth, it will bring forth an avocado tree, which will then bring forth avocados, which will have in them that same seed. We who are born again of the word of God, as we just read in 1 Peter chapter 1, we are born again of that incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. This is the word that brings forth eternal life in the heart and mind and soul of a Christian, the word of God. The corruptible seed is the, the subtle speech of the serpent, the forked tongue that says, does it really mean that? Did God really say that? Does God really expect you? to wear long dresses and skirts you're going to look ridiculous people are going to mock you 
no, 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 that was, that was it. You bought your pants at the women's department. You see, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Sometimes we all wonder, my sisters, how it is these women in the false religion can justify the way that they dress and act. We look at women who are seeking religious authority, who paint their face, whose glorious hair is uncovered, who are dressed in men's clothing, in immodest apparel, who are usurping authority that belongs to men alone, who are doing all kinds of rebellious and disobedient things. We wonder, how can they deceive themselves like this? How can they do these things? Well, you see, they have chosen the corruptible seed. They have chosen rather than to obey God and therein obtain a good understanding. They have said and said, mm, let me think about that. I'm going to try to figure it out because it doesn't feel good to my flesh to cover my hair or to wear women's clothing or to be modestly dressed or stop wearing jewelry or makeup or to cease trying to do things that God has only ordained men to do. And you see, rebellion is a characteristic of Jezebel. And Jezebel, when we read about Jezebel in the Old Testament, and I'll put some references in the description box under the video. But Jezebel usurped the authority of her husband. She painted her face. She used manipulation, and, and particularly sexual manipulation, her beauty, to, to become a murderer. She envied the power that God had given to her husband, and she usurped that power using emotional manipulation and sexual manipulation. Jezebel was the one who went and murdered the prophets of God in that time. Jezebel is a picture of the false religion. So people who are in the false religion that doesn't know God, that thinks that God was born of a woman, so they think Mary is the mother of God. If they're Trinitarians, they think she was, Mary was the mother of God the Son. If they're Oneness Pentecostals, they think Mary was the mother of God the Father in a sonship role. But both of them make Mary the mother of God. And in that, we see the witchcrafts of the Babylonian Horish Church and that they worship a divine feminine. We have to understand, my sisters, that people who choose the witchcrafts of theology because they're pleasing to their flesh, to their eyes, or to their mind, it's good for their pride, it puffs them up, that the reason these women in particular dress like whores is because they are part of the whore. But we who are part of the bride of Christ, we dress modestly and we obey the commandments of Jesus Christ and his commandments are not grievous. When Jesus said we shall know them by their fruits, what he meant is we will know people by the word that they speak. Do they speak God's word and nothing added, nothing taken away? Or do they go to commentaries or opinions or prophecy conferences or interpretations, the doctrines of men, in order to, as the serpent did to our mother Eve, confound the people into thinking that their sin is going to just be okay, they're not going to die, that God understands, and to cause the people to disobey God, which will lead them to death, as it led Eve to death. It, if Eve had chosen, and of course, nothing happens unless God allows it. He knew what Eve, Eve would do from the beginning. It was all done before I ever started. He knew there would come a time we, when he would send his only begotten son into the world to redeem mankind, the only begotten son of God, not God the Son, and not God the Father in the sonship role. The man, Christ Jesus, who was without sin, who in obedience went to the cross and shed his innocent blood, that those who would believe on his name would not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, the, the man, Christ Jesus, the mediator between God and man. God knew that before Eve ever sinned. Before he made the world, he knew what he would do. But if our mother Eve, let's just speak hypothetically, had gone to Adam and said, Adam, my husband, the serpent over there just said to me that there's something God has hidden from us. And that actually, if I eat of that tree there in the middle of the garden, you know, with that poison fruit there that'll kill us with a corruptible seed in it, that if I eat of that, I won't die, but that I'll be like the gods. If she had done that, Adam would have protected her. So we who are Christians, we who love the truth, when someone comes to us with theology, we go to our husband. We get on our knees before the throne of Almighty God. And we say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, show me in your word what is the truth. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Why? Because a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Jesus Christ said, My mother and my brethren are these that hear the word of God and do it. May the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many. In Jesus' precious name, amen.